Black metal in Iran is really underground. You cannot reveal your name or your identity. The government and Islamic regime will find you in 24 hours. They put you in a jail and kill you. My name is Magus Faustus. Uh, I'm from Persia and uh, technically I'm half Israeli and half Iranian. My mother was from Israel and my father was from Iran. And uh, the religion of my mother was pagan. She was not Jewish. The religion of my father was Zarathustrian. He was not Muslim. Uh, I was born in Tel Aviv, December 1974. And uh, my parents served the uh, uh, U.S. Air Force. So my father was a pilot of F-14. And my mother was uh, working in teletype uh, radio technology radar in airport. And because of the necessity of the job, uh, they need to be in an Air Force camp around the Middle East. And most of the time they need to work. And I was spending time alone or with some other friends to take care of me. So there was no full-time family around. And uh, the memories I have in my childhood is more uh, about experiencing the army camps and the, the war and military environment. And I have no, not real feeling for it. But I do remember the first day of school, I was wearing my dresses and I get my backpack. And in the middle of the night, I was waiting in my room to get the morning and I go to school. That was so exciting things I as I remember. I raised uh, in a short childhood in Israel and then we moved to Iran. And then in 1979, the uh, revolution, or we call it revolt, is happening in Iran, Islamic uh, takeover. <laughs> The Islamic Revolution of Iran took place between 1978 and 1979, in which the Islamic fundamentalists and their supporters overthrew the Persian monarchy, which had been in place for over 2,500 years. This led to the exile of Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the last Shah of Iran. One of the many causes that led to the revolution was the exile of Ruhollah Khomeini, popular religious leader who had strongly opposed the Shah's anti-Islamic initiatives. After the revolution, Khomeini assumed his role as the first supreme leader of the Islamic State of Iran. And then the Iranian go with the war with Iraqi without any reason for eight years. Uh, I lost my parents in the war. They need to defend the country. And in, in my in my really uh, early teenagehood, I found myself without parents, with foreign country, and uh, with crazy chaotic uh, concepts of new Islamism in the in the Persian kinghood. Um, I found myself alone, and I, I need to. I need to. F I need to, f to to find the inspiration to how to continue the life with this mess or the reality. Uh, I need to see how I can face it and and survive. The Iran-Iraq War began with the Iraqi invasion of Iran in autumn of 1980 and lasted for eight years. Tensions between Iran and Iraq were fueled by Iran's Islamic revolution and its appearance of being a pan-Islamic force, in contrast to Iraq's Arab nationalism. The war ended in a UN-brokered ceasefire. The Iran-Iraq war is considered the deadliest conventional war ever fought between regular armies of developing countries. The estimated total of casualties ranges from one to two million. These deaths resulted in 144,000 orphaned Iranian children, including Magus. I 
I grew up in a war zone country and um, during my teenage years uh, my relative from both sides was take care of me so each year I need to be a new city with new family. Constant moving made my school really difficult the whole 12 years till I made it in university back in 1993. So I continue to study. I begin with uh, chemistry and uh, I study in Aragon University and uh, I continue to the ceramic engineering in Maybot and uh, I, I, I switch the, the, the range in, in philosophy I get uh, the master degree there and for final version I get the theology uh, PhD in Qom which is the really Islamic center in Iran. During my studies in universities I start to exploring the countries and the cultures around I travel to India. The, in India, I, I experienced the Vipassana meditation. I travel to Egypt, to Kuwait, to Syria. In Syria, I study um, the calligraphy writings. And uh, in, in Siberia, in North Russia, I start to learn about the, the old shamanic style breathing. And uh, from my father, uh, Zarathustrian side, I become to know there existed the fire temples in Iran. Fire temple uh, has the fire on for thousands of years. And that's the old tradition of Persians who make the fire and don't let it go off. So I found the fire temple and there are teachings about from the Zurvanism till Mitraism, Mazdak, Mitra, Mani till the uh, new Zarathustraism. I have a chance to see the master and I asked to serving uh, one year silence in fire temple and learn the, the ancient techniques as I have. Still, after the year of being silenced in fire temple, I practice silence. I practice it personal, I teach it, I practice it with groups and that's the way you can hack in and you can see what's inside and then you can make your decision of your day, what I'm doing here, what I need to do and so on. That's one of the most basic things I learned in Fire Temple. After my service is finished, I found, okay, now I need to really getting back to life, to the busy world and to the not fair world, to deal with the life, education and art, definitely. You can say my art is destructive, artistic, because I experienced the, the war and I see how war can be destructive. And uh, some part of my art is really loud because I like to over exaggerate it, to just shout it out because of pain. But I really like to show the conflict. So at the end must be harmony, mostly following yin and yang. So, for example, I used to show in one exhibition the image of uh, execution that was live all over the world. And in another room, it was all about the man sitting and meditating, you know, in the absence of time. So I want to show all these paradoxal things. And always I like to remind the person, hello, you are a fucking human. Don't go far. Don't do this shit. But generally, art is a lie. We, we have to accept it. Uh, it shows the chaos of the world in an order which doesn't exist. So we are just gaming. We just playing, you know, around to 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 enlighten you, or it's better to call to and darken your perspective to see and feel who are you, what the hell you doing here, and what's the goal. Warriors of Peace or Guruhe Jangjuyane Sol. That was a Persian art group before This group was happening in my basement back in Tehran. I invited the artist, the musician, who we can work together, who we can practice. And then for making the exhibitions, 
I need to bring more painter to more designer and gradually without knowing and noticing it it turned to the cultural center or underground art center because in later I see some bands coming to practice I don't know them and in one point I see it um, we are like 50 people and food automatically served and there is a sleeping place I mean technically the place 24 hours was like on and I was just the host over there and time to time I was just going out of the country or visit the seminar or teaching in such a thing and when I come back I see the place is running so it was like without any direction just art art just attacking us over there Ces scènes-là, ce sont des pauvres gens qui sont pris dans la guerre et qui se font détruire, anéantir. The cultural purge that followed the 1979 revolution brought artistic activities in Iran to a grinding halt under the new Islamic regime. After assuming power, Khomeini decreed the Supreme Cultural Revolution Council which is the highest body for producing guidelines and making decisions in relation to all cultural, educational, and research activity. This resulted in the heavy censorship of many art forms, such as theater, cinema, and music. This included the prohibition of many genres considered Western, such as pop, rock, hip-hop, and metal. Many artists are still being persecuted today. Those who breach the ban risk citations, beatings, or even arrest. Bouria a grandi dans la guerre Iran-Irak. Il est à la fois étudiant en théologie pour devenir mola et chanteur dans un groupe de rock. Tears of Fire was my very first music band project back in Iran 1998. We tried to combine kind of Kurdish melodies, folkish stuff with black metal. Uh, we were successful to play two shows and one of them was in a religion conference and we invited via some contact we have and middle of the show the secret police came in and they cut the light and they broke the instruments and people was just running out. Uh, so some of us could try to manage to escape out of university with the help of the students, of course. But uh, I was arrested with some of the friends. They kept me in a jail for one night. But the next day, because we officially uh, booked by the religious conference, they need to let me go. The next week after it, we do another show. It was in uh, one of the ancient uh, Iranian ceremonies, Mehrgan. That was in Ziggurat, in Chowazambil. And at the end of the, the show over there, it was a private ceremony. Uh, we get trouble again with the police, so we have to leave the city and back to Tehran. Black metal for me is a lifestyle, is the way of thinking, is a way of analyzing uh, the truth around you. Uh, it's harsh, it's loud, and it's extreme, it's fast. Uh, and it's, it's just like a slap to, to just, you know, you need, you need that slap to wake up. The connection between the whole silence practice and uh, producing or playing black metal, harsh black metal, fast, crazy, 300 BPM, shouting, hard riffing. And after that, hopefully the noise is, uh, when you practice the silence, you go really deep. And at the end, you he I hear that, I hear the noises and I hear the melodies. I hear this hardness, it's, it's so dark inside. So with my, Meditation, I go inside, I discover new things, I bring it back.
In 2005, in winter, it was me and another uh, Iranian artist called Aras and Avinar, which they are the first wave of black metal in Iran. And we uh, cooperate together and we form Beaten Victorious. And uh, it, it was really challenging to find a studio. I mean, we tried to make book studios, but no one accepts us because they said, what the hell you want to record this track? This is crazy music. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to do that. We don't want to risk our life because of your shitty band. But finally, we find uh, through the connection, someone accepted. So we get in and the slot we got was like midnight. And I say, okay, that's the only chance we have. And then it's like 10 p.m. We invite through the studio and we start recording the bass, the drum, the vocals. We just recording only one track. That's finished nearly like 5 or 6 a.m. And the, the best memory I have, the Armenian guy who was owning the studio, during the recording, he just tell us, can I make a phone call? And I said, dude, he's crazy. We're just wasting the time. But at the morning, we find out his son was born and his wife was in hospital. And we realized, wow, wow, such a person who has understanding about the passion we have. That for us was really emotional moment. And the next day he said, I send you the mix and so on. So we said, let's make a party celebration in my house. And by the way, the band has no name that time. Uh, we find out this name after our uh, record release when we were celebrating in home, the secret police in trap, and they take us to the jail and over there beat us to hell. We had blood in our mouth, we had broken ribs, but we feel really victorious. That time we call this band Beat and Victorious. The last art installation of Magos with the art group Warriors of Peace premiered in Iran on February 5, 2005 at Reza Abbasi Museum, Tehran. The sponsors for the event included cultural heritage and touristic organization, Organizations for Defending Victims of Violence, and United Nations Association of Iran. Although the event was legally organized and had influential sponsors, the opening night was interrupted and shut down by government officials. I start to collaborate and run many art groups in different uh, formats and present as a conceptual exhibitions. And the, the last of uh, episodes I tried to make was in uh, Reza Abbasi Museum. And we're selling the tickets, so the people was on the line till the day of the show. And just 20 minutes before the secret police came, so they asked, oh, here need to be shut down, we're gonna prolong this, and who is responsible? They're gonna take everyone. I said, no, 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 this is my uh, art thing, so you can take me. These people is just uh, are participating in this thing. So they took me and uh, they blindfold me with the handcuff in the back, they put in the van without number, and uh, they, they close everything, the people was on the line, that was big mess. I experienced six weeks in, in, in a jail, and I have no idea where, where am I, and I have no cell phones, I have no connection, I was cut from the uh, society and activity, they don't inform me which jail I am and why I'm there, but it was a really small room and there was full of people mixed with criminals, with addiction, with the crazy ones. And they call your name and just they call your name two times. And when you hear it, you need to go out. So they call my name. I say, oh, after finally they call my name. Let's go check it out. What's going on? When you go out of this room, from the left and right, like five meter, both sides, they start hitting you with fist and the, the foot. And then you reach to the another room. So over there, there is a judge sitting over there, the Islamic judge, and they are, la they are wearing white and they're laughing. What you do, my son? You know, this is crime here. You're criminal. 
And that moment they start to talk to you nicely. I was bleeding. I can't hear. I have buzz in my ear. I have broken ribs. I have broken legs and blood was in my mouth. But I, I respond, uh, I, did, I don't do anything wrong. I'm an artist. I, I represent exhibitions. I, I do this and that. And they do, I, I don't see any response from them. So they ordered to take me back because I was like, impolite so I, I need to you need to beg over there the way of back to the same cell is the same story from left and right they start hitting you and they open the door you get in and it was so crucial and i i my physically was damaged over there and a couple of days later again they called me same story but this time in, and, and in the time you cannot visit dark. There is no doctor, there is no telephone, there is nothing. So that's you and, and the darkness. And after the second uh, hitting, we got the permission to go to the yard and just see the sky. And I, I was not sure how many days and uh, weeks was passed because it was dark, there was no window. And in, in the yard, there was a person come to me and say, Ah, oh, son, you are young, you can do uh, many things. Why are you doing this kind of artist? Why are you doing this kind of imagery? Why are you making these movies? Why are you doing this? And I wonder how the hell he know about my history. So this art is really issue here. And then order, I said, mm, yeah, I know, you know, uh, my, my, I lost my father. They are kind of martyr and they, they are vanished because of war. So it's my duty to bring the war to the scene and talk about it. And I say, yeah, I go to drink alcohol, go to the girls, get to the villas, you know, do whatever you shit, drugs, things. But come on, it's not time for these things. Let this war go, you know, it's fine. And then I found, okay, they, 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 hit, they give me the hint to, to get clear of this situation. So the, 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 the next time when they call my name, I just try to focus. When you reach over there, you need to say, I'm, I'm fucking sorry. So when I uh, back to the office with pain and blood, you know, and things, uh, before they give me the form, I just said, I'm sorry, I, I, I do something wrong. Please forgive me because the, the next wrong are going to be dead and no one care when you're dead. Maybe they want you dead. So, and they said, oh, okay, now I see you are, you are wise so you can confess the shit you did. So I just signed the form. I'm sorry for this. I never do this art again. So art is like, never again. I sound it and I see the smile again. So the guy read this paper and they show that room. So they moved me to another room and over there was a doctor checking me, clinical things, they could take care of the blood and things. And yeah, the night they uh, just shoot me out of some of the streets in Tehran. I don't know where was it. And when I come out, I call my friends. I said, take me out of the country. It, it, it sucks. I cannot stay here. I, I'm not allowed here. I'm not welcome to, to my homeland. And then uh, he just said, okay, I call you in 10 minutes. And he called me back and he said, this is the passport. This is the visa. I got an Indian visa because you was there. So, you know, a better uh, environment or chance. And give me the money. Just tomorrow you need to fly. And the next day I fly to India as a uh, political refugee. And I put my asylum and that was like a new country, new thought, new experience. When I got to India, I start to travel and research about uh, meditation and the techniques. So for me, it was a good uh, space to develop my techniques. 
that was I'm visiting many temples and ashrams and I start teaching whatever I uh, experienced. And uh, during the travel uh, back in 2006, I formed Moh as a band and project. The main goal was Oriental black metal. I tried to express my feeling in a free way because it was not Iran. So because of music, I cannot get arrested. So, and in some part, I moved to anti-Islamic black metal. And I started alone. The few albums was recording with the helping of uh, musicians and was collaborating. And uh, the, the Indian guitarist, Deep Raj, joined me uh, and we start to continue recording. So I was doing the bass and I put the lyrics and choose the melodies and Deep Raj was playing guitar. So we did few shows back in India and the next album was with the new member, Noor. A genius guy from Mumbai and he was programming the drum and recording and doing the keyboard and all the technical stuff. That was the beginning of new music career for me. In 2017, I received the news that Noor was committing suicide. Noor means light, but he, he was such a dark person. And he was raised in really extreme Islamic community and family. And he was, uh, when he was hearing about the Moor is acting and writing anti-Islamic stuff, he was joining us to continue this project. And... Uh, after I hear that he is committing suicide, uh, as a friend, I have lots of good memories, good recordings. I feel sad, but at the end, I'm so happy and I kind of admire him because he chose himself when to end his own chapter. Back in Iran, I was consuming healthy food. I was in shape. I was practicing meditation. I even I do the yoga. And when I moved to India, the whole story changed completely. That was the first cigarette I smoked. And then literally I moved to consume alcohol and I, I gradually go up with the level of drugs. From the cigarette, I moved to the hashish, which is holy in India. And they have gods, they have temples to use the hashish over there. And uh, I couldn't catch much uh, deep experience with this substance, so I, I need to move on. And I found opium, which was kind of down tempo. It wasn't change my cycle. So I need to move to the psychedelic drugs, uh, which is like a peyote and uh, LSD and magic mushrooms, uh, which was uh, natural in India and available and cheap. I was combining uh, the acid and magic mushroom with my rituals, with my personal meditation. 
and and this act brought me to deep darkness and I end up to using the heroin and the heroin lifestyle is is not the things you searching in ritualistic and occult way and I was not aware of that point and it took me out of myself for a couple of months and in, in my last ritual which is uh, reached to the point uh, I start cutting myself and I was using a mix of these drugs with the really deep uh, breathing techniques and I was seeing the, the blood is just moving really slow motion out of my body and I was capturing all the fragments of the seconds of these events because I want to see where is the edge of the life and the death. I don't want to kill myself. I want to see that point. I want to see, understand the concept of life. The next things I know is I pass out my ritual circle in my home and my friends the next day found me and he took me to the hospital. And after a couple of months of coma, I woke up in the hospital and I see myself, I cannot walk because something happened to my brain and the liquid coming out of my ear, so I, I couldn't find the balance to stand and walk. And it take many more months to, to, to find this, uh, heal this part, to just start walking again. And I experienced pain, I experienced uh, pain in bones, I experienced too much uh, heavy things, psychologically and physically, but still after this time, I was feeling back to health and I feel clean. In March 2011, I meet a German porn star in India, uh, which interests me to come to the idea of marriage. She was on tour to record some porn series and what connected us was the topic of freedom. I, I mean, porn I see it as a kind of art and it's more direct to the self-extremism. And uh, the, there is a similarity between the, the, the porn hood and the black metal for me was the way you step to the nihilism. So you need to be really strong. And when I saw she is flying like a bird and without any censorship or limitation and the way she talk the way she sing the society and the humanism you know that was kind of occult nihilistic version and for me was really interesting to see it in a porn star soul which doing the completely different way of earning money and expressing herself to the another part of the society. After uh, experiencing Iran and India, we thought maybe we can bring this music to different countries. Well, Europe was one of the targets and we found Germany is kind of freedom of speech and expression. So we said, why not? In January 2012, Magus arrived in Hamburg, Germany. He only spent a short period of time in the harbor city, mainly to go through the immigration-related formalities. During these early months, Magus' marriage had started to crumble due to the drug abuse of his wife, and they soon after divorced. From Hamburg, Magus moved to the small city of Greifswald, where he spent the next two years focusing on music and his new start in Europe. Magus moved to Berlin in late winter of 2014, where he still resides today. When we come to Germany and we try to express our feelings, our ideology, our music and our history, we, uh, we see uh, crazy things happening here and Europe embracing Islam 
And when you when you go back to your history and you see how how this the Quran, how this terrorist mosque can destroy your life and change your destiny. So you get angry and it's simple. When it doesn't exist, I have better life. I have parents at least. And I, I don't need to run over the countries and ask begging for a passport. That's a fact. I love Iran, that's my home country, I love the people, I don't like the government, I don't like the things happen there, I hate religion in any form but especially Islam because they really ruined the humanity there. Iran after 1979 was the first country to test this kind of extremism. Look how they did to the people. The people is not normal again. They, they destroy their mentality. They destroy the history. They brainwash them. 